five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in Chicago. The movie musical, not the city. And I've read three of her books, three of their books. It's a sister team. It's a sister duo. I also did a lot of that on the audio, on the audio, on the Facebook. So it's a psychotic journey through the bowels of magic and madness. And she, no, that's not true. That's the wrong story. But I would like to get to it because I've heard really good things. I'm also hearing a car alarm. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today we're gonna to continue finally on the bookshelf tour, which got a little bit off track because of life and my back and I honestly, um, we're gonna do this one today and on quick glance, I don't know what a lot of these books are about and it's also double stacked, so it's like a whole dumpster fire that's about to happen here. But I am going to not dwell slash explain as many books as I normally like to do because we're going to be here forever. But I am going to take the books down and I am going to show them all to you and um, I will tell you what I can tell you about them, like if I've read them or not. And hopefully we can find some that I can unhaul because I legit need to unhaul some books, which I have not been doing a really good job at. So if you are not familiar with what I would loosely call a series, I am walking through each shelf on my bookshelf and literally just showing you guys the books I have if I've read it, if I haven't read it, trying to unhaul some of them, trying to move some of them to the forefront. And ultimately, I want to reorganize how my books are set up. So I just need to do this shelf and this shelf over here. And then I feel like you've probably seen these in other videos. So we'll see if we're going to go into the secret embarrassing piles that are stacked all over the place as well. But. Let's get to this shelf, which is five, six, seven, eight, shelf number nine. Did anybody else have one of these? <laughs> so I feel like you guys have probably figured out by now that I'm a pack rat, but only for certain special sentimental things. Tell me if you had a koosh ball. Comment down below. And if you don't know what a koosh ball is, I just dated myself. All right. Oh man. Okay. Here we go. Okay, I'm not even <laughs> like, gonna pretend I'm not horrified by how many books came off the shelf, but like clearly I can stack books like nobody's business. So let's just get right into it and start with the book that I actually know. Her Every Fear, Peter Swanson. You guys know I love him. Kind Worth Killing is the best one ever. Not a spoiler because it happens immediately. The person murdered in this book's name is Audrey. Set in Boston, very much enjoyed it. And now we're gonna go into, I have no idea what it's about. Lisa Unger, I do enjoy her writing. I need to read more of it. And here's one of the books I can read about, The Red Hunter. No idea what this one's about. Next one, this was a book I got at Thriller Fest and part of like my welcome kit a couple years ago, Killer Choice by Tom Hunt. Don't know what it's about, but I did go through books and this was one that I wanted to keep a while ago. It's some kind of thriller because I got it at Thriller Fest. So keeping it. Um, a classic and a favorite that I love to pieces, The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I do have two copies of this book. My original copy is so beat up, so I bought a new one. I have read this so many times. I stand by it, I love it. Look at me not talking about books, but talking about books. Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I have read all of her books that she has out. I would say of all four of them, this is my least favorite, although I will also say I listened to this on audio, which I think kind of shortchanged me the experience. So this is one of hers, I'm gonna, I was gonna say that I'm gonna reread. I have reread Sharp Objects and Gone Girl multiple times. I'm gonna reread Dark Places. A book I know nothing about, Keep Her Safe by K.A. Tucker. I bought this in some sort of binge a long time ago. I also have He Will Be My Ruin, which I haven't read, but I'm still curious about her. 
Another classic that I love that I've read a million times is Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. This is also a second copy I have. My original copy, which I read in college for a class I took is marked up beyond all recognition. I've also read it multiple times. I just love this book. Again, stand by it. Season one of the Hulu show is completely true to this and then it deviates. I've watched season two. I need to go back and watch the rest of them, but I'm a huge fan. Next up, this was another Thriller Fest book I got. Yeah, this is not an arc. The Fourth Monkey by J.D. Barker. See no evil, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, do no evil. So I've heard great things about this book and I just haven't gotten to it yet. So I've kept this one also, but he's done stuff with James Patterson. I got this at Thriller Fest a few years ago. So keeping that one. Now here's a book that I, we've talked about this before. So The Good Thief's Guide to Vegas. So I have The Good Thief's Guide to Paris. I read The Good Thief's Guide to Amsterdam and I unhauled it. I read Amsterdam first, which I want to say is the first in the series. And he's kind of like a cat burglar-ish type of thing. And then I went out and bought the rest of the series, but never read the rest of the series. So I'm going to put this aside, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, I really loved it when I bought it. This came out in 2010. <laughs> and I have the hardcover. So I can tell you guys how long I've had this book and I haven't actually read it, which I realize is a sign. So I'm putting it over there. One Little Secret by Kate Hollihan. I did read this book. This is sort of like neighbors who are friendly. Their kids are friends. Their kids all go off to summer camp and then all the couples go like for a week away on Long Island and some bad stuff happens. So we've got sort of multiple timelines, murder, mystery, detective, secret keeping, hence the name One Little Secret. I enjoyed it. I've heard great things about another one of her books, which is 100% in this pile. So we'll talk about it when we get to it. A book that I am embarrassed I haven't read yet, Dennis Lehane's Mystic River. I haven't actually read any Dennis Lehane and I haven't seen this movie yet. And I know it came out a long time ago, but I intentionally am not watching it because I want to read the book first. And I've heard great things about it. This is outside of Boston, I think, not Boston proper. You guys know I love anything that's Boston-ish heard great things about this. And then I want to say this is the 20th, not this version of it is not the 20th anniversary of it, but yeah, this came out in 2001. So I heard an interview. I want to say it was on Poison Pen. It was Dennis Lehane and Gillian Flynn talking about their books when it was the 20th anniversary of this earlier this year. Really great interview. He's very interesting. I need to read his books. Oh, this is the Kate Hallahan. So lies she told, I've heard from people who've read a bunch of her books, this is their favorite of her books. So this will be the next Kate Hollihan that I read. The next book I've had forever. I just refuse to get rid of it. It's called Charlie Big Potatoes. And this is by Phil Robinson. And he was married to Anna Maxted. And I saw them so I, this is awful. I ripped the front cover out of this book because she signed it. This is from 2003. I saw them both at a reading together in Boston, oh, the Brookline Booksmith, which is outside of Boston for those of you who do or don't know. And I went to see her and then he was there also doing a reading and he read this and he signed it and I'm, I just wanna read it. I know this is like the silliest thing that I'm still keeping this but I was totally intrigued and I just fell for it when I was there and I just can't, I can't bring myself to get rid of it. So what I should actually do is probably read the book instead of just hold on to it for sentimental reasons. But there's a story for you. Mine, not that. The Likeness by Tana French. I just talked about this in my series September. This is a series I want to continue in. This is number two in the Dublin Murder Squad. Haven't read it yet. You by Carolyn Kempness. You guys know I love this book. Another great series if you're looking for one for series September. Dark and Messed Up. Joe Goldberg is great. Next book is Blood Wedding by Pierre. I know it's, I'm like, Lamage. I, I know that's not right, I don't speak French. Um, this was like an unreliable narrator situation. Oh look, a bookmark. Some <laughs> magnetic panda bookmarks that I have. Nothing focuses. I don't think I'm ever gonna read this one again. I didn't love it. I liked it, but I didn't love it. It was a little bit slow at times. The cover is beautiful. I might let this one go. 
The Chain by Adrian McKinty. This book was like so compulsive, but like crazy off the rails. And this was like two books in one. So like the first half of the book and the second half of the second half of the book felt like two totally different stories. I loved the dark and messed upness of the plot, and then it just went like hardcore off the rails, but I was in it for the hype and I read it. So there you have it. Next one, I haven't read 29 Seconds by TM Logan. So it doesn't take long to get revenge. I guess maybe it takes 29 seconds. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> Bought it. Ah, 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 ah. One of my most favorite books on the entire planet. Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. There's nothing I can say about this book that you guys don't already know. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I can't wait to reread it again. This never stops being interesting to me. Love it. And if anyone is looking for a creepy soundtrack, I listen to it for writing, but just even if you just like some creepy soundtrack in life or anything, the Gone Girl soundtrack is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. It's Trent Reznor and someone whose name I'm not gonna be able to remember, but it's such a deliciously creepy soundtrack. Oh my God, it's so good, it's so good. Next up is a book that I 1000% thought I had unhauled, but here we go. The Party by Robin Harding. This was not at all as dark and messed up as I wanted it to be, so I was disappointed in that. It says more about me than it says about the book, but this was like a teenage slumber party and something goes horribly wrong, and then you get some of the parents stuff, but it just wasn't, wasn't dark and messed up enough for me, so that one is going to go. Dead Letters, I've talked about this so many times. It's two sisters. One of them is presumed dead, so the other one has to come back to town, but she thinks her presumed dead sister is basically like messing with her almost. Zelda is her name. And I wanna say they like own a winery or their family has a winery or there's something to do with a winery. Haven't read it yet, Lisa Jewell, you guys know I love her. This is The Family Upstairs. This is another beautiful cover. She gets such good covers, you guys. So this is like multiple points of view, multiple timelines. It will get read. Love her, not getting rid of her. Another book, God, I'm looking at this pile. I don't know what any of these are about. Lucy Whitehouse, Keep You Close. I have absolutely no idea what this is about. They said it was a tragic accident, but she knows better. So sounds dark and messed up. I don't know why I keep flipping through the books. Like I'm gonna find some secret pile of money or something in one of these, but I don't know, psychological thriller, something. I'm making that up, I'm not quite sure. And then the next one is also called The Party. This one's by Elizabeth Day. And this is over the course of a single evening, two married couples will come to question everything they thought they knew about each other, culminating in an explosive act of violence. I don't know how this one came on my radar either, but it just sounded really interesting. And it says, a cleverly built web of intrigue, the party reads like a novelistic game of Clue, taking us through various half-truths and lies its characters weave, as the past and present collide in a way they never could have anticipated. So it sounds really interesting to me, and Phoebe Waller-Bridge plugged it on the back. From Fleabag, you guys know I love her. And her quote is, I practically murdered this book in an evening. Loved it so much. So, she said it with a wit to die for. I love her humor. I think she's brilliant, so not gonna lie. It's part of the reason I haven't gotten rid of it yet. Next up is Steve Cavanaugh, The Defense. This is the first one in the Eddie Flynn series. I haven't read this one yet. You guys know I've talked about 13 multiple times, which is also in this pile. This is book four in the series, which I didn't know it was book four in the series. So you can read this independently, but at some stage, I figure I might as well go back to the beginning. So again, if you're looking for a series book, you can technically dive in here. I don't think it really spoils much for you. Next up is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I haven't read this. I got this at a library sale. It's The cover has definitely seen better days. It's 770 pages. I don't know when I'm ever gonna get to this, but I would like to get to it because I've heard really good things. I'm also hearing a car alarm. I haven't seen the movie of this either, but like I said, I got it for like a couple bucks at a library sale and considering it's hardcover and the book itself is in great condition, I'm just gonna continue to hold on to it. Another book I got at that very same library sale that's huge and I haven't read yet is Kate Atkinson's Life After Life. I've heard great things about this one too. 
And this one has a beautiful inside cover to boot. It's like I fell out of an episode of Degrassi to boot. Um, what's that all? A boot? Anyone? <laughs> nope. So I haven't read any Kate Atkinson yet and someday I will. This one is also in pristine condition and I paid a couple bucks for it. Okay, also part of a series which I haven't started is Persons Unknown by Susie Steiner. I picked up a bunch of these books in one of those book outlet back in the day kind of haul situations. So it's a detective series. I don't even know what number in the series this is, but I know I have other books in the series because, you know, I'm a crazy person. So there you go. And then next up is The Furies by Katie Lowe. This was another book that I like had to have and I never read it. So it's Obsession, Witchcraft, Murder. I am thinking, it says Witches, Murder, and Teenage Girls. This is the book of my dreams. I am obsessed. That I'm going to put together a bit of like a spooky-ish, not even Halloween-ish, but it's just sort of like a spooky season TBR. And I would like to read this one. So I don't really know anything about it. I haven't heard anybody talk about it. It came out a couple years ago. I don't know what to think. <laughs> like you don't hear people talk about it. It's either like everybody is sleeping on it and it's underrated or I don't know what, but I'm gonna kind of put this to the side in a let's get to it sooner. Let's make a spooky TBR video. I can't believe I haven't read this book yet. Julian McMillan's I Know You Know. This is like a true crime podcast. I think this is dual timelines maybe. Yes, mystery in the past, mystery in the present. Someone was murdered. His friend is making the podcast from present day. Then there's a long dead body found in the same location where the thing happened in the past, which kind of has in the woods vibes to it. And I've heard great things about this book too. And I feel like it's so up my alley. So you know what? I'm going to put that with the Furies and see if I can prioritize some stuff. I have to say, you guys know that I'm not a TBR maker, but doing series September and fall into books? That's not what it's called. Fall into readathon, something like that. Having a focused project to work on, like over the course of a month, and then I made that entire TBR, part of what's sitting right here, of books at boarding schools. I find that I'm reading more, but then I'm still popping out and doing some other things, but it's kind of helping me to read some books that I want to read, but I just needed sort of like a goal to focus on almost. But anyway, I digress. So another series which I love, this is Alifair Burke. This is Never Tell. This is her Ellie Hatcher series, and this one takes place in Manhattan, sort of a boarding school vibe, Upper East Side, rich girl, found dead. And this is also maybe book four or five in a series, which I didn't know at the time. It is book four in the series. Maybe that's my lucky number. This is the first Alifair book I read and I fell in love with it. And I wound up going back to the beginning with the Ellie Hatcher series. This is also Ella Fair Burke, but this is a standalone, long gone. I'm such a huge fan of hers, but this was a great book and one I have read more than once and will continue to reread. And then I have Anatomy of a Scandal by Sarah Vaughn. I know this is going to be or already is out, maybe on like a Netflix, it's like a mini series. And I would love to read this. I always find it so funny when people were like, I really want to read this book. Cause I'm always like, well, duh, you're holding it, then read it. And now I'm that person, I'm like, I really want to read this book. <laughs> well, duh, you're holding it. So this came out in 2017. I will eventually read this book. Okay, next up we have Liz Nugent, Unraveling Oliver. I read Lying in Wait <laughs> by her. So this is more like slow burn, I feel like character study. I feel like it was kind of pitched as thriller, but it's not fast paced thriller. It's more literary thriller, I would almost say. So it was a really good book. I went in with the wrong expectations thinking it was gonna be fast paced, but it was like good, dark and twisted. So I'm expecting this to be as well. Next up is Catherine Croft, While You Were Sleeping, a gripping psychological thriller you just can't put down don't have a clue what it's about. You wake up to find the man beside you is dead. He's not your husband. This is not your bed. What do you do? <laughs> I think you uh, run to death, run to death. I think you run for your life because apparently it says he's been stabbed to death. Whew. Love it. 
Friends Like These by Sarah Alderson. I loved this book. I ripped through this one super quickly. I read this last March, I want to say. My note inside says, love so fun broke my slump. This was so much fun. This really was. I picked up another, I read this two years ago. I read this two years ago. I need to start dating these. But this was like dark and twisted female friendship. I have another one of her books, The Weekend Away Down Here, and then her newest one, The Stalker, I want to say. I have from NetGalley, which I need to read, but she was just like a great compulsive storyteller. Marriage Lie by Kimberly Bell. This is my first Kimberly Bell that I read. I really liked this one. I totally just mixed up plots for this story. So in this one, happily married couple, woman's husband goes on a business trip. And I want to say like he goes to Miami and then she gets a phone call from the police that her husband's plane to Seattle has gone down and he's dead. And she's like, no, 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 he went to Miami. And they're like, mm, he's on the manifest for Seattle. And she winds up finding out that her husband has all sorts of dark secrets and she knew nothing about it and you can guess she's not too happy about it and also maybe her husband is dead so there's that <laughs> next up is the last mrs parish by liv constantine this was their first book i really enjoyed this book a lot it was definitely on the dark and messed up side and i just i had such great fun with this book and then i have sherry lapina's a stranger in the house i haven't read this one so couple next door and someone we know i really enjoy an unwanted guest, I want to say, is the kind of isolated mystery one. I kind of liked it, but some of it, I didn't totally think it played fair at the ending of it, of that book. And there was also this weird, I can't say it without spoiling something. There was just something very weird in it that just didn't make practical sense to me. Next up, Hannah Mary McKinnon's The Neighbors. I read this a uh, few years ago. I feel like this was like right at the beginning or pre-booktube days. And I really liked this book. This is like multiple timelines, mystery in the past, mystery in the present. This woman is happily married and then the neighbors who move in is like her ex-boyfriend and his wife who she hasn't talked to in like 20 years, I wanna say. And there was a reason they don't talk. There was some dark stuff from her past. Very interesting. Next up is a middle grade book that I bought, not realizing it was middle grade, which doesn't make it bad, but it's called The Gallery. And this is by Laura Marks Fitzgerald. And I really liked this. This was set in the twenties. It's like a mansion. So Martha's mom is the maid there. And then she's 12 years old. She winds up working there too. And there's kind of like some mystery going on at the place. I'm gonna donate this book. This, I will never reread it again, but I think this would be really fun kind of gave me mixed up Files of Mrs. Basley Frank Weiler vibes, just sort of in the feelings that it evoked in me, but I liked that one. And then I went out years ago, again, in like a book outlet back in the day, Hall. I picked up this, the first three books in the Corman Strike series. So this is book number one, Cuckoo's Calling. I've heard Cormoran Strike. I've heard really good things about these books. I just haven't read them yet but I would be interested to give them a go. So you're gonna see all three of these somewhere. I think they're stacked here someplace. Next up is The Hazelwood. I haven't read this either. Another beautiful cover. It's like I had to have it. I wanted to be in on it. This was early in my booktube days where like everybody was talking about this and I've had FOMO to the point that I bought the book but never actually read the book. So gonna have that much FOMO. Another beautiful inside jacket. So someday, someday, someday. I'm not dying to read it, but I have a curiosity about it. And then Courtney Summers, All the Rage. So she wrote Sadie, which I read and loved. She also wrote The Cheerleaders. I feel like that was her. Nope, that was Kara Thomas. So I haven't read this one yet, but I will. I'm still curious about it. And then another book I haven't read, this is The First Mistake by Sandy Jones. I've heard really good things about her writing as well and her stories. I just haven't read this one. And then I also have The Other Woman somewhere. We'll get to it. More Gillian Flynn. This is The Grown Up. This was her novella. It's like the size of a toothpick compared to her other books. This is just a fun ghosty story. I enjoyed it. I totally did. Seriously, she could write anything and I'll read it. And then the next book I have, which I just saw this is going to be made into a series or a movie, I want to say. This is Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. I haven't read this either. This is also petite for a book. And it's experienced the blazing surreal sensation of a fever dream. 
So I read a book last year which felt like a fever dream and I hated it, so I hope that this is not the case here. But I read it, or heard about this? I either read about it on a blog or heard it in a podcast and I wound up snagging it. So I should just, when the time is right, read it. 181 pages, but like, look at the pages. Curious though. Okay, another TM Logan book, because apparently I love him but don't read his books, and this one is called Lies. And this says, what if your whole life was based on lies? I guess we'll find out someday. Next up is Christina Henry's Alice. So she wrote a few kind of like dark and twisted stories from fairy tales. So I've heard great things about her books. I want to say I have Red Queen here somewhere also, and I think she did Hook too. So it's a psychotic journey through the bowels of magic and madness is the quote on this one. So yeah, that sounds fun. Speaking of madness, we have Twisted by Steve Cavanaugh. I haven't read this one yet. This is a standalone, but this one says, never let murder get in the way of a good story. So this is something to do with a writer, which is why I wanted to have it. And then another book that I know nothing about, this is Sue Fortin's The Birthday Girl. She's in for a killer surprise. So I feel like this is a whole bunch of friends go away for a birthday weekend and I'm pretty sure somebody dies. Yep, four friends, a party to die for who will survive. Who knows? Another series, this is Anthony Horowitz, The Word is Murder. This is the first book in his Hawthorne series. And this is the book where he is the self insert. So I read this one, really enjoyed it. Sentence is Death is book number two. I'm pointing up there because it's up there. And then the third book, I think like the the line is something came out in the UK in August and comes out in the US in October. So I very much enjoyed these. And then, oh my God, it's like my Gillian Flint shelf, Sharp Objects. All four of the books are on this one shelf. That wasn't on purpose. I love this one too. I've read this multiple times also. And the HBO show is brilliant with this one. Totally brilliant. I do not organize my books by author. Here's more Anthony Horowitz, Magpie Murders. I loved this one. This is a book within a book and so good. So good. That was my first Anthony Horowitz that I read. The other two Cormoran Strikes that I have, so I have Career of Evil and then I have The Silkworm. So again, I haven't read them, but I have them. And then we have Killing Kate. I haven't read this book either. This is a serial killer is stalking your hometown. He has a type. All his victims look the same and they all look like you. This is by Alex Lake. I don't know if anybody's heard of this. I, again, I don't know. It just sounds good. It just sounds really good. And then I have Wendy Walker's The Night Before. I did read this one and I enjoyed it. This is multiple timelines, two sisters. One is like happily married, perfect life. And then her sort of wild younger sister comes and stays with her and she goes out on a blind date and never comes home and it becomes what happened to her sister. So you see the night before when she goes on the date and then you see the day of when she doesn't come home and her sister is trying to find her. I really enjoyed this book. I did the audiobook for most of this. I feel like I read a little bit here and there, but the audiobook was really good. Okay, we're in the home stretch. The next one is 13 Minutes by Sarah Pinborough. This is one of her YA books. I read this one and I enjoyed it. This definitely is Mean Girls vibes and it was just a fun read, but I don't think I'm ever gonna reread this one. So I'm going to put this in the unhaul pile. And then the next book, I've had this for a long time. This is Lucinda Rosenfeld. Oh, we're all whited out here. I feel like you're not gonna be able to see this one at all. Here we go. What she saw is what this one's called. So this is about a woman named Phoebe and it's what she saw and all these people that she dated. And on the front, it's a list of 15 guys' names. And I just remember like loving this when I read it. And this is one of those books that I just can't seem to part with, but I haven't read in a hundred thousand years. This came out in 2000. So I'm gonna hold on to this one too and give it a reread at some stage. And then I have Little Women by Louise May Alcott. I haven't read I don't even think I ever finished reading Little Women. I like loosely remember the story and I know I've seen the movie, but I haven't, I don't even think I ever finished reading the book. And it's funny, I think about that Friends episode where Rachel and Joey read each other's favorite books and he reads Little Women and she reads The Shining and they wind up like spoiling stuff for each other. So I kind of like wanna read this and then I wanna read The Shining. Is that weird? 
Next up is another book that I love. This is Frenemies by Megan Crane. This is set in Boston. This is definitely, I mean, can you guys even see how much this is dog-eared? I've read this book multiple times. This is definitely dating in your 20s, single in your 20s, group of friends from college in your 20s. This was a thousand percent my experience, like my early 20s in Boston. We all went to school there. This book has like my heart written all over it. Another serious book I talked about recently, this is Vengeful by B.E. Schwab. So I read Vicious, I haven't read Vengeful yet. I would like to reread Vicious before I dive into this because I read Vicious a couple years ago now and I would like to just be in the zone. Another book I really don't know much about, huge as can be, had to have it. This is Say You're Sorry by Karen Rose and this is a series now. I don't know if it was meant to be at the time, but this is like a serial killer and I don't even know. I've heard like a lot of people read this one and like it. It's just gigantic. I don't even think I realized like how 612 pages, how insanely huge this is. <laughs> like sharp objects, this book. <laughs> so I will read it. I will read it, but not during series September because it's gonna slow me down. Next up, I have Elizabeth Rains, The Into the Darkest Corner. I wanna say CJ Tudor recommended this as like a dark and messed up book, or that's a thousand percent wrong, it might've been CL Taylor. But this is supposed to be kind of dark and messed up, so you know, I had to buy it. So Elizabeth Haynes started writing fiction in 2006 with the annual NaNoWriMo National Novel Writing Month Challenge and the encouragement of her creative writing courses. So I just, I love me a nano writer, but I got that. Here's The Other Woman by Sandy Jones. Haven't read it. One of my most favorite books, if we were villains. So this was my secret history. Had to read this one next. I pre-ordered the 10 year anniversary special edition of this from the UK, which is stunning, you guys. And I love this copy. A lot of people have the one with the skull on it, but I have this one and I love it. So I'm gonna reread this. And then the last book I have is In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. And this is my favorite Ruth Ware book. This is dark and messed up female friendship, isolated weekend, multiple timelines, just loved it. I fell in love with her when I read this book. Like I said, my first one of hers, stand by it. It's like the one that I find a lot of people don't like, so. I don't know what it says about me, but I love it. So that's gonna do it for today's video, and I'm feeling pretty good <laughs> about getting rid of four books, but that's better than I did on some of the other shelves. But I am, I will do kind of an unhaul wrap up roundup for you guys because I have a small pile over there of books that I'm going to unhaul based on what we did here on the shelves. I have one more shelf to go. There's a big basket behind this picture behind me. And then I have a feeling that when I do reorganize my shelves, I'll find a few more that I'll be able to liberate from my house and pass on to someone else or someone else's, someone's else, other people, and they will love them more. But let me know if any of my unread books or books you guys have read and you would recommend I push some of them to the forefront or if there's ones that you're kind of like, meh, maybe not so much. And I will talk to you guys soon in another video. So if you've made it this long, thank you guys so much because I know it was long and I appreciate it. But take care everybody and I will see you soon. Bye guys.